Went to this someday in it for you The teacher fed at school was there She said how do you do Come back through to my classroom I'll teach you a thing or two oh, Who's in you this time Who's up you now I'm not really into this someday in it for you The butcher gave my wife a wave And gave her a surprise When she saw the poundy beef That was protruding through his flies Oh who's in you this time Who's up you now I'm not really into to this someday and it for you the lassie fae the baker said you want to have a try I'm hot just like an oven so get stuck into my pie <laughs> who's in you this time who's up you now I'm not really into this someday and it for you the birthday party clown said will you suck this for a laugh I said show me that again you cunt I'll fucking rip it off <laughs> who's in you this time who's up you now get to fuck your fanny there's no way I'm touching you So that was me, I'd had enough I couldn't take me mare I went to get the wife, I couldn't find her anywhere Oh, who's in you this time? Who's up you now? I'm not really into this, I'm doing it for you Did you make a wee deposit? Said the lassie for the bank I said, no, that's me, a wee new hen I'm off to have a wank Oh, who's in you this time? Who's up you now? I'm not really into this, I'm doing it for you. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you. I think we are genuinely out of material, unless anyone has any requests or ideas you want to throw at me before I fight through you all and go to the do toilet. You know, do you know the hedgehog song? I don't know the hedgehog song, no. Should I know the hedgehog song? You should know the hedgehog fucking song. Oh, shoot, but well, I, I do apologise. <laughs> the hedgehog fucker song? Anyway. Oh, really? Do you, who? I don't, I don't know anyone who fucks hedgehogs, song, but I know people who fuck a lot of things. Hedgehogs aren't on that. No, I said the hedgehog agenda. fucking song. The hedgehog, I don't know what's going on. I can't really hear you, to be honest with you. I was just adding expletives for exact. Children's story? Uh, seriously, would you like to hear the children's story? Yay! Yeah. Okay. This is a genuine children's story that will be available in book form uh, at the end of this year. I kid you not. After all that shag, I suppose it's a logical conclusion to all that shagging and drinking. <laughs> children. I've got two to fucking show for all that shagging and drinking. I don't actually remember much of the shagging or drinking, actually. Anyway, it's called The Lavender Blue Dress. Thank you very much for coming. This will be my last piece of the evening. I hope you've enjoyed your time aboard. Your sea legs are holding up. Uh, there will be more tickets for the Barrowlands gigs if anybody wants to come, which isn't me selling you anything, because as you know, it's free, because I'm such a brilliant, generous guy. And that's about it. So, <clears throat> the lavender blue dress. Mabel knew many girls at school. Some were strange. Some were cool, some were quiet, some were loud, some were bashful, some were proud. Some liked Mabel, some weren't keen, some were nice, and some were mean. But most of the girls, if not all, could afford a new dress for the Christmas ball. Or rather, it would be truer to say that these girls had parents who'd happily pay for fashionable footwear and trendy new frocks to be worn once or twice, and then stored in a box. But Mabel's clothes were torn and tattered, her second-hand shoes were scuffed and battered, and though she always looked fine in whatever she had, underneath, deep inside, she was secretly sad, for she dreamed of a dress of spectacular hue, a beautiful ball gown in lavender blue, the exact same colour as the sheets on her bed and the pillow where nightly she rested her head. On the eve of the ball, the old school bell rang, and as always, the boys and girls all whooped and sang, but louder than usual, for Christmas was near, and the ball was tomorrow, a school full of cheer. But Mabel didn't jump up and run to the gates, or sprint all the way home like all her classmates because, unlike them, when she arrived at her house, there would be no new dress, no frock, no blouse, no dazzling new outfit, no gown newly bought. There would be nothing at all. 
or so Mabel thought. So she sauntered home slowly, went straight up the stairs and into her room where she was caught unawares by her mum and her dad and her grandparents too and a bed with no sheets, but something quite new. We knew we could never afford one, mum said, so we made you a dress with the sheets from your bed. We've been working all day to get it just right, making sure that it's not too baggy or tight. So we hope that it fits and we hope you'll agree that the dress is just perfect and we made it for free. Mabel was stunned, her heart loudly pounding. Her mother was right, the dress was astounding. With the gentlest of touch, she tried on the gown and in no time at all waved goodbye to that frown that she must have been wearing for such a long while. But now in its place was a big bright smile. She looked in the mirror to make sure it was true, and there she was, in her dress of lavender blue. Of course she wore it next day to the Christmas ball, and was complimented and flattered by all. In fact, even a boy said she looked sort of nice, as one of the girls asked Mabel the price of that lovely, spectacular dress she was wearing, the ball gown at which all the class were still staring. Mabel just smiled, then quietly confessed, New clothes are okay, but love is the best. Uh, hey, night. Ha, ha,